Perfect. All right. Well, welcome everybody. So for those who don't know me, I am Bethany Maddox. I am one of our high school academic counselors and I serve learners with last names A through K. Hi, uh, yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Heather Fecarata. I'm the other academic counselor and I serve learners with the last names L through Z. So we're happy that you're here this morning. All right. So you are here because we're going to talk about concurrent enrollment. Yes. All right. Okay. So what is concurrent enrollment? So that is when um, a school aged learner takes classes at the local community college. Um, there's also options to take them online. You don't necessarily have to go to the one down the street from your home unless you want to go in person. A lot of the colleges offer virtual classes um, since the pandemic, so which is great. Uh, most community colleges, um, is most of them are tuition free if you're um, in 12th grade or under. Not all of them. So please, if you're not sure about the one that you're hoping to attend, you know, talk to Mrs. Maddox or myself, and we're happy to help you through um, seeing if that is free tuition. Um, there may be some books or materials that you may have to pay for. Um, we cannot use funds for those, so just keep that in mind. Sometimes there's a little $5 help fee um, that you might be um, required to pay. Um, you can earn both college and high school credit that's at the same time. We call that double dipping, um, which is a great way to earn college credits um, while you're still in high school. And then um, the dual enrollment can refer to college classes being taken through a specific high school agreement. So we don't offer that. Um, some of the colleges call what we're calling concurrent enrollment, sometimes they call it dual enrollment, some have both. So you're just gonna wanna make sure whatever the college is you're doing, that you're, you're signing up for the program that does not require um, an agreement between a specific high school. We do not have any of those agreements with any colleges. Why should I participate in concurrent enrollment? So this kind of went with our second poll question that we asked at the beginning. Um, so a three plus unit class equals 10 high school credits. So most of the college classes are around three units. Um, they're one semester long. So in a very short period of time, you're earning an entire year's worth of high school credit, which is great for some learners. Um, especially when we go back to the, why are you doing this? If you're trying to graduate early or even, you know, earn your AA degree, any of these things, it, the earning the credits quicker will help you with those goals. Um, if some of the foreign languages, not all, so it depends on the language and it depends on the school you're taking it. Some of those classes could be worth two years worth of high school credits. So 20 credits, which is amazing. Um, if the class is transferable to a UC, you're also going to get a weighted GPA, um, also meet the A to G admissions requirements um, with that transferable to a UC class. It can enhance your com um, competitiveness for college admissions. I see you're taking a rigorous course load when you're applying to that four year um, earn an AA degree, which is amazing. Graduate early, we already talked about, and it proves you're ready for college. But here's a really good one. Many CTE courses are available. We have had many learners with iLead complete their com entire career technical education certificates at the community college while they're in high school, which means when they graduate, they're ready to start their career, um, which is an amazing thing that, um, is offered um, for high school students. I would caution you though, that not every CTE is available to a high schooler. One specifically I would say would be cosmetology um, because the nature of that CTE requires full-time attendance because you have to log hours. They don't allow high school students um, to join that particular career technical education. Okay, so these are some things to keep in mind. Um, these are not necessarily our rules. They're um, the state of California community college rules. Um, so 
high school learners or, or younger can only take up to 11 units per fall and spring semester and five in the summer and winter. Um, that is because you need to be a full-time high school student, not a full-time college student. Full-time college student is considered 12 units. Um, you have to maintain at least four semester long high school courses on your master agreement. Again, we're going back to you're a full time high school student, so we need to make sure you're enrolled full time high school, which is four semester long classes um, before you can um, take those 11 units. Um, we do recommend that you start your paperwork early. If you're looking right now into starting some classes in the springtime, get on that college's website and apply to be a student. The earlier we can get this done, the earlier your registration date will be and the better likelihood of you getting into that class or classes that you're hoping to take. Um, once you're done with the class, once the semester is over, you will have to send an official college transcript um, to our school in order to receive the credit. Um, you need, must need to get a C or better if um, you're hoping for that A to G credit. And then here's an interesting one. The state does not permit high schoolers to enroll in PE courses at community college. So um, keep that in mind if you're wanting to take, um, you know, a basketball class at the college, it's, it's not allowed. Um, and then all learners that are enrolled with us, even if you're over 18, um, must have a special admit form signed by either Mrs. Maddox or myself before you can enroll in college classes. Um, that is something that the colleges require. And then uh, that also gives us a heads up that you're taking a, a college class, which is great. Um, we're happy for you and we're happy to sign those forms. So try to get everything in as early as possible so we have enough time to go through all of these steps to make sure you're getting um, registered for those classes you're interested in. Okay, so here we go, checking out course descriptions. So these are screenshots um, of one of the community colleges um, like catalog of classes that they offer. So we wanted you to see what the different um, classes were. So in the first one, we're looking at the transferability. So history one, history of world civilizations to 1500. It's a three unit class and it's transferable to a Cal State and a UC. So this class, would technically meet the UC um, and Cal State um, A to G admissions. However, this class specifically does not meet the high school um, graduation requirement because we require history of world civilizations to be 1500 to the present, so modern. But you could absolutely take this class for college credit and elective credit for us. Um, then there's also, so you see one there that's two units, um, and its placement via current assessment process. So that's something internal that the colleges would do to see if you're qualified for that class um, or if there is a prerequisite that you need to complete before taking it. Same thing looking at the math two. Now we're looking at a five unit class. Um, it is transferable to a CSU and a UC. So it would also meet A to G requirements. Um, but they're going to, again, prerequisite. Do I meet their prerequisite? Again, that's going to be up to the specific college, whether your completion through Algebra 2, right, with us is enough to take that class, or if they want to see you take something else at the high school level before being enrolled into that class. Who's ready? Any of you can be ready, but let's just talk about the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. So once you are a learner attending school beyond high school, they are considered an adult in the eyes of the college and the learner themselves is responsible for all communications. So all you middle schoolers that said you were in middle school right here, that's you too. So you're gonna have to make sure you're able to self-advocate for yourself at the college level emailing the professors, emailing the admissions office. They don't wanna to talk to your parents necessarily. They certainly don't wanna to talk to me. I've tried, <laughs> I've tried calling admissions offices on behalf of learners and they just give me general answers. I, I can't talk about a, a learner specific. Um, you must be able to work independently and navigate um, everything that comes with a college class. This is a college class. It's gonna be on your college transcript forever. So 
again, I highly recommend we take something we're extremely interested in, especially the first go around. Um, same thing with disabilities. You have an IEP, you have a 504. You must be able to self-advocate with that disabilities office about any accommodations you might need while taking that college class. Um, I think we already talked about that. Um, here's another thing. Some of the content uh, may be mature. So keep in mind you're in a college class, you're ready for it academically, emotionally. You know, let's, you got to look at the entire picture. Um, you could have, you know, 50 year olds in your class. They could be discussing mature content. Um, so please make sure that you or your learner is ready for those types of engagements. Um, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, PG it just for you. <laughs> So perfect. Beth, I think you're up next. Yeah, so what many of you are here to learn about is concurrent enrollment in middle school. What does that look like? Well, uh, middle school learners uh, cannot earn high school credits. So we want to be very clear about this. You do not start earning high school credit until the July before your ninth grade year. So July 1st of ninth grade, which is that summer after eighth grade. Um, that is when you can begin earning high school credit towards graduation. Um, if you take community college classes while you're in middle school, those are still uh, potentially going to meet college admissions requirements. They're still going to be part of your permanent college record, uh, but they are not going to be counting towards those high school graduation requirements. So that's something that it's really important to think about what you're taking and make sure that we're not taking U.S. history, that we're not taking things that um, are going to be a requirement in high school because we have to take those in high school because that's part of our high school requirement. So just be aware of that. Um, it also may not be free. So for our 9 through 12 learners, it is typically uh, tuition free at many of the um, community colleges, uh, but that may not be true for learners who are under uh, ninth grade. So if you are in the K through 8 sector, uh, then it may not be free. Sometimes it still is. It really is a um, college by college policy. So just be aware that you look into the, um, the policies at your community college um, in regards to kids in K through eight. Um, middle school, school learners uh, will need special permission often from the dean. So you have to actually meet with the dean of the college to make sure, they wanna make sure that this is appropriate, that you are um, you know, gonna do well and be successful. And then um, we also do get uh, requests for letters of recommendation uh, for our middle schoolers, again, or younger, to take classes at um, the community college. And so be aware of that. Um, and, and, and for those reasons, if for no other, give yourself plenty of time. So we were talking about dates earlier. Um, so for example, if we're thinking for the spring, um, we would start this process right now. Um, start the process of signing up, doing the paperwork, all of that, because you've got a little extra hoops to jump through as a middle school or below. Um, so just be aware of that. And I say below because we have had learners quite young do community college classes if we you know, decide that it is appropriate and it is a good placement, so. How can you use those concurrent enrollment credits? Um, so accepting concurrent enrollment uh, credits, most California community colleges uh, those courses will transfer to the University of California or Cal State systems. This may vary according to your major, but be aware that those are a pretty good bet that if you're taking um, those classes while in high school and you plan to attend a UC or a Cal State, it should transfer with you to those um, universities. And we have had learners graduate, uh, apply as a freshman, go to, go to a university as a freshman, and then be reclassified as a junior once they're there. Uh, many courses will transfer to out-of-state public universities. Some colleges will not allow concurrent enrollment classes to, to transfer if taken for high school credit or double dipping. So there are um, primarily our highly selective private universities that will have stated policies on um, whether they will take any community college or college coursework taken while in high school for an incoming freshman. Um, there will sometimes be limits on that. And then additionally, they might take it, but they're not going to take it if you used it to meet your high school diploma requirements. Um, so for those points, it's really important that you know where you're applying and be aware of the policies at those schools, right? So um, if, for example, you know you're seeking highly selective um, admissions and that's your goal, um, that doesn't mean don't
college classes just means be aware that you might not get transfer credit for those college classes, but it might go a long way in kind of helping your case and getting into those highly selective schools. So that's something to consider as well. Um, concurrent enrollment in college applications. So be very aware that if you are applying um, while you are in high school to college, even if you have completed an AA degree while you're in high school, if you're applying to a university while you're in high school, um, in almost 100% of cases, you are applying as a freshman admin, not as a transfer student. The reason why I say almost is because we did have a case, um, I think it was last year or the year before, where we had a learner apply to Cal State Northridge and they did actually allow her to apply as a transfer student. So we're, we're finding there are a, a handful of Cal States that are allowing that, um, which is kind of a new uh, situation. Uh, but for the most, in the most cases, uh, if you're a, a high school senior applying to a university, regardless of whether you finish an associate's degree, you are applying as a freshman admin. So um, Heather highlighted this a bit earlier, the uh, career education opportunities at the community college um, are tremendous. Uh, they were given a grant a few years back, maybe five, six years ago, um, to really improve their, their career education programs and um, partly with uh, serving their high school communities as a part of that um, uh, goal. So career technical education is an opportunity to take uh, courses from industry professionals, get some of that hands-on um, experience, and you can work towards a certification or a license in that field and gain valuable experience. Um, this gives you hands-on experience with state-of-the-art equipment, um, transferable credit with certain programs, and a wide variety of career paths. So um, there's a lot of things we can offer in this environment, right, of independent study. And one of those is some really high quality, hands-on um, career education type courses. That's a struggle for us in a virtual environment. And going through the community college is a fantastic way to get some of that experience. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, um, take a look at your local community college's CTE program. Honestly, I do it all the time. Like just Google school's name, CTE, and you can find their career education page and it'll show you what programs they have and what degrees they have through those programs. Again, sometimes they're um, certificates of achievement um, and those are just a handful of units. Sometimes they're full certificates that are a little bit more. Um, there's associate's degrees, which are gonna be a little more plus some general ed classes. So there's degrees and layers, if you will, of um, what they offer in each of those career areas. And it's really fascinating to kind of just explore and see what your options could be. The steps for um, taking a concurrent enrollment course. Um, first off, so we have a learner agreement that um, we need you to fill out. So the concurrent enrollment learner agreement is our form. Um, essentially, we want you to be aware of some of the things that we're talking about here today that um, you know, you're gonna be responsible for getting a transcript to us um, that uh, the learner is expected to um, be the one communicating with the professor and with the school and, and that expectation um, that there may be mature content. Um, so there's lots of things on that form that we just want you to say, yeah, we understand parent, student, that this is um, what we're agreeing to and understand when we're going into a concurrent enrollment class. After that, you're gonna follow the uh, regular admissions uh, directions for that community college, select potential classes, from either the class schedule for that uh, coming semester or from the course catalog. Uh, and then you can complete what we call that special admin form. It is called different things at different schools. Um, so if you need help, you're welcome to meet with Heather or I for some additional guidance and we can send you specifically for the school that you're looking at, what that looks like. Um, some of them have digital forms now. So the pandemic gave us this one gift that many of them do their forms digitally now. So they just come straight into our emails. And so you would use our email addresses um, based on our alpha split. And um, we get a direct email, we click a button, we sign a few things, it goes straight back to the college, right? Some are still a little more antiquated and those are our paper forms. Um, still can be done virtually if you will, um, but it's more of a process because you've got to fill it out, send it to your EF, EF sends it and submits it to our um, form on our end. We download it fill it out, and then we send it either back to you or directly to the college, depending upon um, what the college preferences are. Uh, so that's sort of that process. 
This is an example of what a special admit form can look like. This is specifically um, Antelope Valley Colleges. I imagine we need to update this at some point because if you look at the dates, you can see this is um, a little old. I think this is from about three years ago at this point, um, maybe longer. So, uh, but this is just shows you the different things that you're gonna have to know and fill out. They need to com be completed each semester. So this sometimes comes as a surprise. You don't do this once and now you're good for eternity. Every semester you have to fill out a new form and we have to go in and individually approve the specific classes that you're choosing to take. Um, so you may, if you send it in and we've got a question, get some back and forth from us about the classes. Um, so every semester you have to list all the courses um, that you would like to register for and include both the course number and the course name. Um, because we're going to go in and then kind of look those up and make sure that that's, um, you know, an appropriate class. Uh, Heather listed an example earlier, which was um, the history class. So if we are seeing you're signing up for a early history class, that's not going to meet the standards that we need for high school. We're going to double check and make sure you're aware. Uh, and that's really what you're intending to take. Uh, so sometimes, oh, sometimes we do uh, actually suggest you guys list additional classes beyond what you um, plan to take. because you get last choice. So you don't always get into the class you want to take. And so sometimes just to hedge your bets, it's good to put two, maybe even three classes on there, even if your intention is only to enroll in one, um, because most of the colleges, they're not gonna let you sign up for something that's not on that form. So if it's not on that form, you're not signing up for it. And guess what? If those that first choice is gone and you didn't put anything else on there, now you gotta come back and do the process over again. Get another form filled out, get another form signed by us, and now you are that much later in getting to your registration. And so we do sometimes recommend um, put a couple of things on there if you've got some choices, if you've got some options, um, and uh, then you'll just have an easier go of it. Beth, can I just come in really quick? Yeah. Um, so regarding these forms, um, especially the electronic ones, they seem to have this question more often. Um, please do not select homeschool. It creates a whole other issue. Um, your learners are not in a home school. They might be working at home, but um, we are a public charter school. So please make sure you're selecting the appropriate box for type of school. Yeah, because it will get you stuck in a nice little loop where they want you to turn in your PSA, which is your private school affidavit, which you don't have, and neither do we. Um, so yeah, good point, very good point. Um, so we do want to mention as well that um, the, the, red, the uh, limit is 11 units to register, not necessarily 11 unit limit to put on your form. Um, so 11 uh, unit uh, maximum, that is, uh, some of the colleges do have lower numbers. So that is a California state number um, maximum, but you may find, I think like Santa Monica maybe one, where they actually have a lower semester um, maximum for high school students. So you wanna be aware of that as well. So we have some resources for you guys, things to think about. Um, RateMyProfessors.com is a website you can go to that has just about every college on there and the professors. And it is, um, students can go in and, and review their professors. And so that can be some good information, right? So if you're looking at a class, how do you know what professor to choose or which section to choose? Um, and so if you go on here, take it with a grain of salt because most people, if they're complaining, it's because they really didn't like it. Um, and so uh, same thing with people who are, have glowing, going reviews, right? So um, if there's a whole lot of bad, take that into account, uh, but one-offs, maybe not. Uh, and so Rate My Professor is a good way to get some added information to see if it's gonna be a good fit um, from a teacher perspective. Um, California Community College's website, cccco.edu, -C 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 that's a lot of C's. Um, that's a nice place to go. If you're like, I don't know what my local community college is, Go to that website immediately right on the front page. There's a place to put in your zip code. Put in your zip code and it'll tell you what community colleges are closest to you. Um, and then cvc.edu. This one is another um, gift from the pandemic. Um, this is actually a database of online community college courses uh, in the state of California. So if you're looking for a specific course and you want it to be an online class and you can't find it locally, go to cvc.edu and you can put in a specific class and see, there could be a, a college in Northern California that is offering the class you want online next semester, and um, you can sign up for that. So there's no limit based on geography where you sign up and what college you, you take classes at. We've had learners take colleges or college classes at multiple schools because they're trying to search around and find the right classes and classes that are available and open to them. 
Um, so that's a really good resource as well. Okay, so if you guys have more questions, we do have our high school email um, that is there at high school at ivydexpiration.org. Um, from an alpha split perspective, you can email myself or Heather directly. Um, and we've also included our college advisor's information on here as well, because um, you can ask her questions too. Um, so from here, I think we'll go ahead and stop our recording. And thank you guys so much for joining us.